let's imagine that I am the thing hiding inside of this box. If I were this object, then take a guess of what I would be. So here are some of the projects I was involved in last year. I helped populations and NGOs during rescue operation after Hurricane Sandy in Haiti. I was key into counting endangered animals on an Australian island. I helped farmers to manage their crops and fields in South America. I also assisted mining companies in South Africa to monitor their open pit mines. And I helped worldwide construction company to visualize their progress. Any ideas? Okay, so here are some more clues. My CV by today is quite impressive, but wait until you see what I'll be doing in the future. I'm quite young, but I am ambitious, and I have huge potential. You may only see the tip of the iceberg right now, but I can see the iceberg, the glaciers, changing. I have superhuman sight. I have superhuman brain power. And I can even fly. In fact, I am thousands of eyes. I am powerful algorithm. And I am flying machines. I am a new type of technology. I am less than two years old. And I'm right now disrupting the whole mapping industry. I am the next generation mapping tool. I am. The mapping drone. Visual knowledge of the Earth is so important, so valuable, that right now there are dozens of satellites dedicated to this task and thousands of aircraft taking images of the Earth every single day. Thanks to initiatives such as Google Earth or OpenStreetMap, this data has become accessible to everyone, even on your mobile phones. However, who controls this data? Who controls when, where, and how these images, these aerial maps are taken. Control of most of the satellites are inside of the hands of military, governments, and large multinational corporations. What possibility is there for an individual or for a small institution to acquire aerial maps? What possibility is there for an individual or a small company to decide when, where, and how these images are taken. Well, one possibility could be to take a computer, learn how to hack, hack into a satellite, control the satellite, but th that's not a good idea and we'll not recommend that. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even going to talk about satellites at all. I'm going to tell you about some groundbreaking extraordinary new technology. The thousands of eyes I was mentioning before, there are thousands of images taken by a simple compact camera. The flying machine, well, here you are, a small tiny robot flying in the air weighing anything between 500 grams and 2 kilograms. That's like a pigeon or big parrot. And the powerful software, that what transform the images into maps. And that's where me and my startup are involved in. Recent progress in these flying machines means that they became so easy. You can just press a 
push a button or launch them by hand to see them fly. And you don't need a remote control anymore. No, they are guided by GPS and fly autonomously. They are lightweight, inherently safe, and can cover multiple square kilometers. As they fly, they can take thousands of images. And the powerful software is combining these images to make 3D landscapes. So let me tell you how you can get 3D out of 2D images. Right now, you are looking at me with your two eyes. Your brain is comparing the two images. And by analyzing the differences of these two images, your brain is getting a sense of depth. Well, our powerful software is doing exactly the same. But instead of using two images, it's using thousands of images to generate these 3D landscapes. So why does it matter? What does it mean to us all? It means that military, governments, and large corporations are not the only one anymore who decides when, where, and how this aerial data gets taken. You, you can now gather instantaneous, high-quality 3D maps of the world, up to 10 times more precise than satellite imagery. This can make a huge difference for individuals, corporations, and institutions, which are in desperate need for aerial images, aerial maps, but where none has, until now, been available. So in addition of being used during rescue operation in Haiti, of helping farmers manage, manage their big crops and fields, of helping mining companies to measure their minds. This technology has been already used for a huge variety of applications, and I'm going to show you some more of them. By local festivals to monitor the crowds for security reasons. By insurance companies to establish the truth after litigations, after disasters, on building sites, by even golf owners to promote their golf course, and by an oil tanker trapped in Alaska by the ice, needing to find its way out. <laughs> But the real question is, what would you do with it? If you had these flying machines, this powerful software, and these thousands of eyes, what would you do with it? Thank you very much.